There is not much room around here, unfortunately. Everything is very uh, compact and bijou, as one famous program used to say. The task is to remove the very substantial existing single phase motor from this milling machine in order to fit a new three phase variable frequency motor in its place uh, hopefully to avoid the need to keep climbing up here and this column is not actually at its maximum height at the moment in order to um, mess about with belt speeds which candidly I can't really be bothered to do as a result of which the milling machine is nearly always running at uh, the sub-optimum speed for whatever cutter I'm using I just cannot be bothered to get up there it's very fiddly to mess about with those belts and I just can't be bothered to get up there and do it most of the time Having lowered the column on the machine I, it hopefully is obvious why I want to go to variable speed control on the motor I've no criticism of this milling machine, it was really very cheap um, uh, and I've had it quite a few years and it's given me excellent service uh, it has good height under the quill, excellent table travel along and cross and it's just the bee's knees for the sort of things I do but to change the quill speed you have to mess about with two belts slacken off some cap head screws to rotate, it's stuck at the minute, to rotate this to, to remove the belts um, move that to remove the belts and depending on what you want to do you actually have to physically remove the belts because if you want to get at the um, really low speeds uh, this belt has to be put below this belt which means they all have to come off and it's generally uh, quite a rave unless the column's normally up somewhere near the ceiling um, it's, it's just untold trouble um, and it really is the only real major issue I've got with the machine actually what I'm going to have to do is to, and it's quite heavy this thing is to spin this machine around so that I can get easily to the rear to get at that motor and get that off and I guess to do that we're going to have to have some minor uh, I don't think tidy up is the right word but reshuffle of, of everything to make some space on this bench get the machine vice and the rotary table off the milling machine because I leave those permanently set up more or less if they're not in my way um, and also to uh, temporarily find a home for all these other bits and pieces that lie behind the machine um, to get a bit of use but not a vast amount which is why they lie there in order to create the room to uh, effectively turn the mill around so I can get at the motor happy days not at least when I installed this milling machine I had the good sense to place it upon uh, a metal sheet on top of the uh, on top of the bench on which it rests and that certainly does make it a lot easier to push the machine about um, this is the motor that I've got to remove it's a one horsepower 1400 rev um, 240 volt single phase motor capacitance start one of the interesting things is that the motor I'm going to replace it with the three phase four pole motor is also one horsepower but I should say by volume it's probably about 50% of the size it's in physical dimensions much smaller 
um, which is kind of curious really. I don't really understand electrics but I'm sure there's a very good technical explanation for that. Before going too far and to make sure things were working I temporarily wired the inverter and the three phase motor up on the bench just to make sure that uh, it performed its duty. The motor does have a virtually instantaneous reversing function but I don't think I don't see much use for that actually on a milling machine. Now one of my theories is that you cannot be unlucky all the time, particularly if you collect every bit of spare rubbish and whatever and stick it under your bench. And incredibly, under my bench, in a box of miscellaneous pulleys, I found that pulley, which is absolutely a perfect fit on the end of the spindle of the new three-phase motor, including having a built-in keyway that fitted exactly so that's going to be the drive from my three-phase motor and there's the motor not totally permanently but there is the motor fitted to the back of the milling machine a thousand years ago when I was at college uh, a friend of mine was doing a, an electrical mechanical degree and he described me, I think he was being kind, as an intuitive electrician rather than having any knowledge. I think what he really meant was I got this tendency to just uh, wire things up and watch for the smoke. <laughs> Probably not such a great idea really. Don't try this at home. Right, I have temporarily and somewhat gashly just wired up the three phase inverter. I mean the wires are all wrong, they're all over the floor. Uh, but really this is the purpose for the purpose of just seeing if things uh, work in the sense that they turn round without wasting too much time if it doesn't go. According to some earlier tests I carried out using my uh, rather unreliable, I have to say, Chinese digital um, speed recording uh, instrument, tachometer, um, a frequency of about 20 set on the inverter uh, gave a speed, a motor speed, spindle speed on the motor of about 595 on the motor spindle speed of about 595 rpm so what I'm going to do is A press run and because it had already been set to 20 the spindle on the milling machine is going round and what I'm now going to do when I can find the tachometer thingy is to see what speed that spindle is turning round at. This digital tachometer, dirt cheap and is actually very variable so cannot record it as accurate um, but using the tachometer the uh, spindle speed on the end of the mill is give or take 425 rpm and that corresponds to the motor spindle speed at this frequency of 594 so uh, there's a little bit of a reduction which is be about right from the pulleys I've got on selected on the uh, on the head of the milling machine I've turned the inverter frequency up to 50 which corresponds to a motor spindle speed of approximately uh, 1500, 1497 according to this somewhat naff uh, tachometer 
and that's giving a spindle speed of well, it's all over the bloody place really but 1194 so I suppose you could say 1200 now it's very unclear whether I ought to do this um, the inverter can be turned up to give a, a frequency of 65 and obviously in the UK the, uh, the frequency of the lean coming supply is only 50 so I don't know whether this is a good idea or not but anyway at 65 with a, with a inverter frequency of 65 that equated to a spindle speed on the motor of 1950 or take that seems to equate to a spindle speed of about 1400 probably a bit more than I would ever run at so I think I'm maybe not going to use this 65 hertz frequency setting uh, until I find out more about it at this stage I will say that the idea for all this came from Steve Jordan who has his own YouTube channel very clever man and Steve has fitted uh, a couple of these inverter drives to his two lathes. I don't really think I want to put an inverter drive on my lathe. I don't have much trouble with the belt changing. The driver for this is because it's so flaming awkward to change the belts on this mill, particularly when the column is, you know, it's extended right to the top, which is why I've done it. Um, however, I don't regard this as a how-to video. My knowledge does not extend to telling anybody how to do anything, so I'm not doing that. Um, if you're worried by any of this, get some expert help. Um, and don't necessarily uh, take notice of anything I do. I know nothing. Woohoo! I changed the... Uh, the U and the W wires around, switch their positions and by magic that has reversed the direction of the motor and the milling spindle is now running in the correct direction so that the collets etc will be uh, self-tightening and not come unscrewed and everything will fly everywhere um, really happy about that. One of the things I've been wondering about is whether this is the original contactor on off switch for the original single phase motor and one of the things I've been wondering about is whether in some fashion it's possible to wire that in Obviously the single phase in will be okay, but whether it's possible to wire that in in some fashion to um, start stop the inverter. But, um, or at least to run the inverter. But I noticed by its plate, it's rated at uh, 220 to 250 volts, 50 cycles. So I think maybe for the moment, I'm not going to play until I get a bit more knowledge as to uh, whether wiring this into the um, into the output of the inverter and hence to the motor is a good idea or a bad idea. Uh, don't know. I have to think about that. Now it seems to me to be entirely logical. If instead of, as at the moment, having a 3 pin plug 240 volt lead wired into the back of the inverter, instead of doing that, if as originally I wire this contactor to a 3 pin plug off the 240 volt supply into that contactor, and then from the contactor 
I then run a 240 volt lead back into the inverter. It seems to me, possibly, that this on off switch should actually be capable of isolating the inverter safely. Uh, so I think I'm going to do that. If it don't work, don't bother to send flowers or anything to my funeral. I really don't deserve it. I come from an age when you didn't have to wear motorcycle helmets, and I used to ride motorbikes, and the only protection was a pair of welly boots and a cloth cap turned backwards held on with a pair of ex-World War II uh, solid glass Mark 7 goggles. I did fall off the thing once. As far as I know, I didn't bang my head. I did hurt my hip, and it hurt, so I said I wouldn't do that again, fall off. But as for not banging my head, well, when I press this button in a minute, I guess you might take the view that perhaps I wasn't correcting that presumption. I have wired this contactor up, uh, and uh, both ends to the uh, VFD. At the moment, I think the stop position is engaged. I will now press, God help us, to go. Heavens de Murgatroyd. Red writing has appeared on the inverter. There it is. And, uh, well. Shall we press run? Well, why not? Who wants to live forever? Holy camoly. I almost impressed myself. Not entirely. So now... It's off. Interesting. When this thing was wired directly into the main supply, Perhaps I didn't have it running long enough, but the um, the red writing didn't disappear immediately, implying that uh, residual voltage was being stored in the device, and don't put your finger in it. Curiously, using that contactor, um, the writing went off immediately. So that's good, isn't it? Or is it? So here's the finished job. With the VFD all wired up, um, it's also wired into the uh, start stop contactor, which seems to be okay, I don't tell. Um, I've mounted it on the wall behind the machine, which seems as good a place as any. Um, so, all we've got to do now is find something to mill and try it out for real, but I've no reason to think it won't be alright. Apart from changing the pulley on the uh, three-phase motor spindle, I've left all the other pulleys and the belts in place. So, if the current speed range, for any reason, pr proves to be unsatisfactory, I still have the option to, uh, to move the belts and effectively alter the ratio from the, uh, the drive pulley on the motor to the uh, the final drive on the on the quill so um, just see how we get on <laughs> 